This is going to get more expensive. That's why I'm covering a lot on palm oil stocks these days on our channel. Not just that. This also. Now this is made of flour and wheat. And as we know, Ukraine actually produces a lot of wheat. Not just them, Russia too. If you look at this chart over here, you realize that they in combination produce a quarter of all grains for the world. So there's definitely a lot of risk of food shortages that's going to come up in the coming months ahead. That's why on this channel today, I'll be sharing with you five investment ideas that you can get invested into. If you're keen, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about five funds and the first two are actually diversified commodity futures fund. The third one is pretty interesting, so stay tuned for it. The fourth one is actually a gold fund and the fifth one is a pure energy fund. So without further ado, let me introduce you the first name today, which is Schroeder Alternative Solutions Commodity Fund. Schroeder Alternative Solutions Commodity Fund actually invests into futures contracts. So if you're not familiar with the futures markets yourself, maybe it's better to buy a fund whereby the fund manager actually actively trades on the futures market. Because for commodities, we can't buy you know, corn and hold it. It will not make money. But if you buy the contract, which is a futures contract, then possibly you can participate in price action movement. And as we have discussed so far, I'm bullish on agricultural sector because if we were to assume that wheat and corn coming out from Ukraine and Russia is going to be in short supply, then possibly the biggest squeeze could come in the agriculture sector. And that's where we get things started. For the benchmark itself, that's actually the Bloomberg Commodity Total Return Index. You realize that the benchmark overweights on gold and less on energy and agricultural. But if we see this fund, you realize that agriculture is overweighted at 33% and energy at 37%. Now I guess by now you've already seen news that petrol pump prices are going up. And I've suggested that you know all forms of oil, the prices are just going up. Energy is a place that's squeezed, but less mentioned is agriculture. So this fund actually overweights on these two sectors, which I think could see a lot of supply demand shock. And if you want to see the top 10 breakdown, this is the list itself. Top three holdings are all energy related. Now let's move back to the performance of this fund. The three year annualized performance is 11.1%. Pretty good when I look across the universe of commodity futures funds. And with that, let's move on to the second fund, which is a close replication of this. Trend Neither Enhanced Commodities Fund is a close comparison to the first fund mentioned. And let's look at the details of it. For a start, it also uses the same benchmark, which is the Bloomberg Commodity Index. And as we can see, the gold allocation is also underweighted, and they have overweighted on natural gas, brand crude oil, and crude oil. This fund invests in the commodities using derivatives also and has a sing dollar hedge class. One year performance is 30.8%, that trails the index by a bit, and three year performance is only at 9.8%. I'll plot them together on a graph for you to see. Schroeder's historical performance seems better, but only the thread needle one is qualified under SRS for purchase. But wait, I've actually found a new fund that has actually beaten the index. Before we get to what is it, help me smash the like button. It's taking our team hours to prepare this presentation for you. And with that, let me introduce to you PIMCO Commodity Real Return Fund. This fund is pretty unique because when I look across the universe, whether it's ETFs or funds, they have to buy into derivatives, which is futures, contracts, or swaps, to try to get exposure to the underlying commodity index. But this PIMCO Commodity Real Return Fund actually buys inflation-linked bonds. Now this fund has been around for quite a while, since 2007. The total assets managed is also quite sizable at $1.5 billion. They also track the Bloomberg Commodity Index, but instead of owning derivatives, top 10 holdings as you can see over here mainly consists of US Treasury inflation bonds, as well as some others that include Italian bonds. Hence, you see most exposures in US with 16% allocated towards Europe. From what it seems on the bond duration, most are less than 10 years and they have a negative position on the 10 to 20 year duration. But I have to say something. When I look at this fund, it seems pretty complex also. Not easy to understand what is the underlying asset. If you are looking for a small position to hatch, Maybe it could work because when we invest, we need to 
be really comfortable of what is the underlying thing. At least futures contracts, while it is you know a derivative, but it's actually not that difficult to understand. And as long as it's properly traded and managed, it could still do its job. But in my interpretation, this is a bit more complicated to link inflation bonds with commodities. And as always, make sure you are comfortable with the investment or check if a professional can give you a full breakdown before getting invested. And you know everything so far, we've been underweighting on precious metals and trying to overweight on energy. Hence the fourth idea I have for you today is actually a fund that focuses on gold. If you are a big believer that gold is actually worth holding onto at this moment, then it naturally works. The fourth fund today is actually United Gold and General Fund. There are many funds in the market that invest into gold mining stocks. The UOB's one is one of them. And when I screen across, I realized their performance is pretty good across its peers. What we can see is Morningstar has given a four star rating to it. On the portfolio weightage basis, they actually have top holdings in Barrick Gold Corp and Newmon Corp. These are big gold miners. The idea of buying gold mining stocks via a fund is actually to understand that you know when prices of gold increase, their margins get better. So companies that are into mining sectors benefit when their underlying products price goes up. An alternative way is just to buy the gold price itself, which can be done with SPDR Gold ETF. Right now on SGX, there's actually a SING dollar converted ETF. So either way, either you buy the gold price via ETF or you can buy a gold mining stock such as this, which is the United Gold and General Fund. So coming to here, let me know if you have questions, leave them in the comment sections below, and I'll go to the fifth idea for today, which is a pure energy fund. You know right now, oil pump prices are so expensive. I just pumped my car yesterday, and if I'm not wrong, the most I've ever paid for a full tank is about $120. And I'm pretty sure right now, if I were to have pumped the full tank, it would actually be more than that. I actually pumped earlier because I feel that ESO is going to raise my price pretty soon. I'd much rather pump when it's past the halfway mark already and pump it earlier. That's why if we are concerned about energy prices, at least for the near term, things don't go up indefinitely, that's true. But if oil prices are squeezed for the next few months or few quarters ahead, then allocating towards an energy fund definitely makes sense. And therefore, I have this prepared for you. BlackRock World Energy Fund. They have actually multiple fund classes. If you are based in Singapore, look for the Sing Dollar Hedge Fund. Much simpler, no US dollar exposure. If we look in terms of the one year performance, a staggering 55.06%. If we look in terms of the three years, it's at 3.57%, and five years at a negative. That's because energy prices for the last five years have been relatively poor. A lot of movement has been towards the green energy method, which is solar and wind and renewable energies. But as of right now, crude oil prices are squeezed because that supply is being disrupted by the war. Top holdings include Total Energies, Chevron, Royal Dutch, as well as ConocoPhillips. ExxonMobil is quite far down on the list itself. So if we compare to an ETF which tracks an energy index, we realize that ExxonMobil is at the top of the list. And since you know we want active fund managers to take a stance where to overweight in terms of companies, maybe it's also good that they have a different allocation versus the index. This is actually the iShares Global Energy ETF with the ticker IXC. Total return for one year is only 40.94% and three years at 3.13%. On a five-year basis, it's also negative. But comparing this against the BlackRock World Energy Fund, I think the Black Rock World Energy Fund has done slightly better. This fund has been around since 2001 and fund size is past $2.5 billion already. 3 star morning star rated, but the key part is if you are looking to allocate to energy like what I've suggested, be also mindful of when you possibly need to exit. Energy prices won't stay $100 to $200 per barrel forever. And when the tide turns, you need to reallocate your portfolio. That is also something I've communicated to my own private clients. And as of now, this current extreme situation, there are merits to having some allocations towards commodities. So hopefully in this whole tutorial, I've helped you see multiple solutions. And as always, if you benefited, smash the like button. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to a series that I have, which is this. On the private members channel, I'll be discussing more on the war. And because the war impacts commodity prices immediately, I feel it's important to track as well as look at history on what might play out in the subsequent weeks and months ahead.
So if you're keen, look for a private members channel to find a bit more. And with that, I'll sign off from this tutorial. Check out on some of my previous videos I have, and I'll see you there too. Take care, and goodbye.